Hello guys and welcome back to yet of course another video. I am the Light Up Tutor and of course this is the Light Up Hub, the only channel you need for GCSE English. Now today's video is going to be something so helpful for you guys because I know creative writing is such a big hurdle to overcome but we're going to be going through my three top tips on how to get full marks on your creative writing. As you already know on the Light Up Hub we have all of this in way more detail and actually on the creative writing section we've got about a 30 minute long video and a grade nine vocabulary sheet with all the top tips on it. So check that out if you want this in a lot more detail. Okay, let's get into the video. So get your pen, get relaxed, and let's start revising. Okay, just an overview of the three different things that we're gonna look at today. We're gonna look at cyclical structure being the first. The second one we're going to look at is the five senses. And the third one is punctuation. Okay, let's look at number one, cyclical structure. Now firstly, what is a cyclical structure? A cyclical structure is when the piece of writing begins and ends in the same way. So that's why we call it a cyclical, because think about cycle, a circle, it goes all the way back round. We're looping the beginning and the end all the way back round. So say, for example, you start your creative writing, that can either be a story or description. Say you start it with the silence echoed. Just a short sentence, start it off, the silence echoed. Now in your last line of your creative writing, you can either write something that's basically very, very similar or write it basically the exact same. So my last sentence could be, the silence continued to echo. So we said the silence echoed at the beginning and then right at the end I just said the silence continued to echo. That is a cyclical structure because I'm cycling background, I'm still talking about the silence echoing and that's a really, really easy way to implement it. If you wanna make it slightly different, say for example, your beginning sentence of your cyclical structure was the breeze violently gushed. Say that is your beginning sentence. You could change it slightly at the end, but still make it cyclical as long as you've got very similar words in the way that you're doing it. For example, my ending could be, the gushing of the violent breeze came to a halt. So I've still got the idea like the violent, the gushing, I've just said it's come to a halt at the end of my creative writing. So that's a really easy way to implement cyclical structure and that gets you marks not only for language because you're technically using like repetition, but also structural marks, which is a massive component of creative writing, showing you can structure it in an interesting and cohesive way. Number two is your five senses. Now, this is not utilised enough for creative writing and it's honestly so helpful to up-level your creative writing. The five senses are see, touch, taste, smell and hear and you probably use them like in primary school but we neglect them in high school for some bizarre reason but you can utilise those to up-level your paragraphs by really utilising language techniques and really advanced vocabulary within it and honestly, it makes all the difference. So let's go through a sentence or two for each that you could utilize for your five senses paragraph. So for example, for C, you could say whatever you're talking about, blinded my eyes. Or you could say something, whatever you're talking about, cascaded across my vision. Cascaded, like it just comes over like that. For touch, you could say something is numbing. So example, if it's really, really hot or really, really cold, it could be numbing. You could say something is abrasive, so it means it's really rough. So if you're describing, maybe you walk past something or you touch something, that could be abrasive. For taste, you could say a mouth-watering, da 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 So if something's nice, a mouth-watering. And if something's disgusting, you could say putrid. Just basically means it's like vile, it's disgusting. For smell, you could say something is crisp, like the crisp air. Or again, if something's a negative smell, it's not a nice smell, it's a disgusting smell, you could say it's fetid. And last sense, here, you could say a barrage of, a barrage just means lots of, you could use that for a positive or negative sound. And then if something's a negative sound, you could say the relentless onslaught. I love that one. The relentless onslaught of whatever you're talking about. So there are just some sentence starters for your five senses. What I'd recommend doing is at the beginning of your creative writing, depending if it's a description or if it's a story, so just kind of choose whatever fits best. I would do one paragraph with a sentence or so from your five senses to open it up and to really engage the teacher or examiner who's reading it. And then also then include your advanced vocabulary. Little top tip here. If you want to take it to another level in your five senses paragraph, use semicolons throughout. So instead of full stops, 
you semicolons because it will kind of follow on from what you were saying because you're talking about your five senses. And that leads me nicely on to our third point, which is punctuation. Now with creative writing, especially for AQA, it is weighted as 16 marks. 16 marks, there's only actually six marks between what you get marked on for how good your writing is, which is 24 marks, and then punctuation, so your spag, spelling, punctuation, and grammar is 16 marks. Now, it's actually not that hard to get 16 marks. Even if you're not the most advanced of writers, if your vocabulary is not that ambitious, this is a chance for you to actually get a very high mark in this by just focusing in on your spag. Now, let's just quickly go through what every bit of punctuation does because I think that it's actually not gone over enough in the higher years of school, you're just expected to know it, and then students don't actually include it because they don't know how to use like a semicolon, for example. So, semicolon, a semicolon is used to connect two separate ideas, but they're about the same kind of thing. So, as a really simple example with a semicolon, if I said, my mum is a doctor, semicolon, my dad is a nurse. Now, those two sentences could be separate sentences by themselves. Like, my mum is a doctor, makes sense by itself. My dad is a nurse, makes sense by itself. And I can conjoin them with a semicolon because they're both about my parents' job. Colon. Now, a colon is most commonly used for a list. I went to the shop on a really simple basis. I went to the shop and bought eggs, flour, spinach, whatever. That's a really easy way to utilize it. But then you can also use a colon to replace a comma at the end of a sentence. So say you've got a complex sentence, and a complex sentence just means it's got more than one subject within a sentence. So say, for example, you've got more of a complex sentence, and instead of putting like a comma towards the end of it, you could utilize a colon. And then we've also got a hyphen or a dash. Now a hyphen is just utilized to add in extra information. So it's like to almost bolt on a bit of extra information that doesn't necessarily need to be included in the main bit of the sentence, we're just adding it on at the end. Say for example, I was doing my creative writing piece and I said something like, the crisp air danced on my lungs as I took a deep breath, dash, a refreshing awakening from nature around me. So that dash afterwards, me saying it's a refreshing awakening from nature, it's just a bit of added extra information. Then we've got ellipsis, which is the dot, dot, dot. That can be utilized to heighten tension, so to make something seem tense. For example, I was alone, dot, dot, dot. And then the last two I'm gonna merge together is an exclamation mark and speech marks. And the reason why I'm merging this together because I think if either exclamation marks or speech marks are overused, it actually lowers your level of work because it almost seems like it's bolted on and it takes away from the effect of it. So I would try to limit how much you use speech marks and exclamation marks, and that's why I normally would pair them together. So even in a description, for example, you could personify something, personify makes it seem like a human, and make it talk or scream or screech, and then you could use a speech mark and an exclamation mark. So it's not just stories that you can use speech marks for. So say, for example, in a description, say I'm talking about something really eerie and gloomy and dark, I could say, the trees screeched, use my quotation marks, run, exclamation mark, end of my quotation marks. So I'm pretending like the, the tree is trying to warn me about something, but that's the way I can use my speech marks and my exclamation mark. With your punctuation, you wanna make sure you tick off every bit of punctuation at least once. If you can, try use things like semicolon, colon, and a dash twice. That is ideal, but at least everything once. And then you wanna pair that with varied paragraph and sentence lengths. Now this is so easy to do because all you actually wanna do is just make sure it's not all just big blocks of paragraph, that you actually just split them up. So for example, you can have one word paragraphs for effect. So example, you can have run, full stop, new paragraph. That's just a really easy way to make sure you're ticking off those spag marks and you can also include punctuation within that to really up level your creative writing. So that was a quick touchdown on three top tips to include in your creative writing. So remember, make sure that you have a cyclical structure, that you do a five sentence paragraph, ideally with semicolons if you can, again, take a lot more punctuation. And then the third one is punctuation and make sure as well you vary your paragraph and sentence lengths. That's all from me today, guys. Remember, if you do wanna see more of this, do check out the Light Up Hub 
because we've got all the content on creative writing, all of the language papers, and also articles, speeches, letters. We've got everything on there. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.